Welcome to lesson two of theater. I kind of changed my positioning a little bit, so it could be a little bit different. Let's go crazy. Okay, so we talked about art last time, and now we're going to talk about what exactly is theater. Theater is one of the fine arts that I gave you, and of course, that's the class that you're taking. So theater comes from the Greek word theatron, theatron, which is spelled T-H-E-A-T-R-O-N. Theatron, to me, sounds like a robot or a heavy metal band, but it's not. It actually means seeing place. So in Grecian times, theater was a place to see and also be seen. It was kind of their social network of the time. Um, theater started out as rituals. So these were dances or ceremonies for the gods. Remember in the Grecian times, this is a polytheistic uh, situation. So they have more than one God. And people would sing and dance in praise of them. After these rituals came about, uh, there was storytelling. So it kind of goes like this. It was rituals first, then storytelling. And storytelling came with the advent of language. And after storytelling, we have theater. So um, with storytelling, there was also the development of body language and voices. And we have some scripts that are like 5,000 years old. So theater has been around for a very, very long time. What elements does theater need to be considered theater? Well, it needs to be live. We're not live right now. I mean, I am technically alive, but you're probably watching this as a recording. In fact, I know that you are. But for theater to happen, it needs to be actually live, and it needs to have a written and rehearsed script. So you have to read Oedipus Rex and Romeo and Juliet. Um, if you just have the script in your hands, then it's literature. But once you perform it, it becomes theater. So literature, if it's just you reading it, like my notes, and then it's literature once you perform it, like theater. Um, let's go back to middle school, shall we? Let's say that you were in love with somebody. Remember what it was like to be in love in middle school? And that you got the flu. And the other person that you were in love with um, went out with your best friend. If that sounds like an oddly specific example, it's because it is. So let's say you're in middle school, you go out with somebody and then you get the flu and then a week later, when you return, the person is going out with your best friend. You see your best friend and you see the person that you were in love with in middle school and you're like, hey, nice to see you. Yes, I'm feeling better. I'm so happy for you guys. You look great. Well, bye. Is that a performance? Am I performing for you right now? Maybe. Performance, the actual definition that I'm going to ask you about in this class, is a series of actions taken for the benefit of someone else. In this case, in theater, the someone else would be the audience. But yeah, that's a little bit of a performance, right? Because you are portraying something for the benefit of someone else, maybe for your best friend, maybe for your, the person that you thought you were in love with right? We have social contracts where we have to act a certain way. And whether those social contracts get broken, it can be a little discombobulating. Like right now, right? Um, I know you didn't sign up for an online class, but here we are online. That social contract was broken because of the bigger social construct of the COVID-19 coronavirus, right? So when these contracts get broken, it puts us a little bit ill at ease. And same thing with the audience, right? If you are watching Sesame Street Live and somebody next to you says, there's no way Elmo exists and starts arguing with the puppets, sorry, the Muppets, then that social contract has been broken and it puts us ill at ease. So performance, one more time. 
is a series of actions taken for the benefit of someone else. A series of actions taken for the benefit of someone else. In this case, the actions would be, um, the, the audience would be the someone else you're taking these series of actions for. That's a performance. And performances involve impersonation. So, <coughs> I lived in Rochester for a while. And I can get the Rochester accent down. And every once in a while, when I get angry, I'll get into my Rochesterian accent. I can't help it, right? I hate that I do that, right? So if I'm talking like this, then that's impersonation. It's, some, it's, it's not me who I am. I'm impersonating somebody from Rochester, right? Impersonation is a key component of theater. And it's one of the few art forms that involve impersonation. So impersonating someone. I want to talk to you a little bit about, pre, um, we talked about presentational and representational. Um, so I'm talking to you right now as a presentational thing. I'm talking to you. If I was representing something, like representing, excuse me. Let's say I'm talking to this faceless dinosaur, right? And I'm saying, hey, dinosaur, how are you? You're looking a little sad. At least that's what I'm thinking because you don't have a face. I'm representing a conversation, right? The dinosaur isn't talking directly to you. I'm talking directly to you right now, but I'm representing a conversation, right? That's representational theater, right? Right. Presentational is if someone's talking to you directly like this. My son made this when he was three. Okay, so presentational, direct address to the audience. Representational is when you're representing what life should be like. Those are the two kinds of theater, two kinds of performances that I expect you to know. Alrighty, so when you are in the theater, you are entering an agreement that you as an audience member are going to sit and the actor is going to say their lines and you're going to believe in the reality of the play. So let me do something really fast. Do you guys know Friends? Da -na 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 -na. Okay. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do cafe perk, all right? So let's say that here's cafe perk, right? And here's the sofa. You can't see this, can you? All right. So new thing. Let's say that there's the sofa and cafe perk, and to the sides of the sofa there's two little in chairs, and we, as the viewing audience have superpowers. That means that we can see through the wall into the action of the play. And that brings up a very important theatrical concept, the fourth wall. The fourth wall is the imaginary line that separates the action of the play from the audience. The fourth wall. So with representational, when you're representing a conversation, that's like you can see through that fourth wall. Presentational, you break the fourth wall. Fourth wall is completely imaginary, but it's something that you agree is a construct when you see film, when you see theater, that you have that superpower and you can see right into it. Fourth wall, super important probably going to be on a quiz. Presentational, representational, also probably going to be on a quiz. Okay, another very, very important theater concept before I let you go would be um, the willing suspension of disbelief. That is, let me say that again, the willing, the willing suspension of disbelief. That says, I am going to believe in the reality of the play that I'm seeing. Romeo and Juliet, 
Yes, they could fall in love after one conversation. Yes, it's true love. No, it's not a teenage murder suicide. These people really love each other. Remember we talked about Sesame Street Live? Yes, that's Elmo. I believe in the reality of that play. It's not somebody with their hand up their hiney. It's actually the reality of the play, right? Um, Cinderella, not about footwear. It's about true love. You suspend your own belief system to believe in the reality of the play. And when I ask you to look at different plays this semester, Oedipus Rex and Romeo and Juliet, I'm asking you to do that. I'm saying, please don't take all your stuff into this. Believe in the reality that the play sets up for you. And guys, that's really hard to do. It's taking an open mind to see something and to say, despite my personal story, I'm going to put that aside and I'm going to listen to the story that is being told within the play's constructs. Hard concepts, but very important moving on. Willing suspension of disbelief. The fourth wall. Presentational and representational. Theatron, that's theater. And that will be lesson two. I'll catch you on the flippity flop.